On page six of your workbook, there's a basic overview of um, coronary anatomy. And it's important to have a basic understanding of the coronary anatomy because when we're looking at a 12 lead ECG, we're looking at leads that reflect specific parts of the heart and more specifically reflect specific coronary vessels. And um, knowing which leads correspond with which coronary arteries greatly increases the accuracy, accuracy rather of your 12 lead ECG interpretation. So uh, for starters, the first vessels that branch off the aorta um, uh, are the uh, the coronary vessels, and they come off the order around here. And um, so there's the right coronary artery, which travels along here. There's the left main coronary artery, which I haven't listed here in the bullet point, but it, it's a short artery, and then it quickly bifurcates into the uh, left anterior descending coronary artery and the circumflex artery. So I'm going to talk about the RCA, the LAD, and the circumflex uh, more specifically in the next slide presentation, but these are important to, uh, to keep in mind. The, um, uh, the coronary vessels travel along the epicardial surface, and this is clinically uh, important because um, the epicardial surface has a slightly richer blood supply than the endocardial surface. And so um, based on that knowledge, we know that if a patient has advancing coronary artery disease and there's one vessel in particular that's affected, if that patient develops a tachycardia where the metabolic demands of the myocardium are increased, um, if one of those vessels is not able to um, provide adequate blood flow to meet the metabolic demands of the heart, what happens is the endocardial surface that's fed by that specific coronary artery becomes ischemic, and that's called subendocardial ischemia. And we can see that on the electrocardiogram in the form of SC segment depression, which I'll show on the next slide. We also know that if a patient has their first bout of angina, um, oftentimes um, their physician will refer them to a cardiologist to have an exercise tolerance test, also called a stress test, where they go on a treadmill, they'll have a 12 lead done, and what they're looking for in the 12 lead is uh, either evidence of cardiac irritability in the form of ectopic beats, or they're looking for evidence of subendocardial ischemia in a specific area of the heart. So if the patient's on the treadmill and exercising, and at some point they see SD7 depression in two or more leads that reflect a specific coronary artery, then they know that they have one particular vessel that's a problem. And at that point, they may discontinue the test, and the patient may be referred on to have an angiogram where they can look at that vessel in more detail using injectable dye and determine specifically which vessel or branch of the RCA, LED, or circumflex is affected and to what degree that vessel is occluded. Is it occluded 60% or 80% or 90%? And what further interventions need to be done? Do they need balloon angioplasty? Do they need uh, coronary artery bypass grafting or some other kind of therapy? We also know that when uh, the cardiac uh, the cardiac muscle goes through its cycle, that coronary perfusion takes place during diastole, which is uh, the opposite of all other organs which receive their blood supply during the systolic phase or the contractile phase. Now, when we look at the myocardium in a, in a tachycardic state, I, I thought this was an important bit of a caveat here. Um, knowing that coronary perfusion, or, or, or what happens to coronary perfusion during tachycardia, well, to start with, um, during a tachycardic phase, the myocardial metabolic demands will be higher, and so consequently, uh, myocardial oxygen, oxygen consumption, or MVO2, will be increased. And this all happens, of course, in the face of um, a situation where uh, ventricular filling time is decreased because in a supraventricular tachycardia or a um, uh, ventricular tachycardia, the ventricles don't have adequate filling time. There's also decreased diastolic time. And so consequently, uh, coronary uh, or cardiac output will be diminished and uh, coronary perfusion will be diminished, and ultimately this leads to cardiac ischemia. And as I mentioned, we see this in the form of ST segment depression below the baseline here. So you can well imagine that uh, this becomes a vicious circle with this, and these patients uh, may need either uh, vagal maneuvers or pharmacological intervention or electrical therapy to get them out of that tachycardic state.